Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to install Windows 7 in VirtualBox. You may be wondering how easily you can use Windows 7 without having to dual boot or reinstall your PC. I do have other tutorials on Windows 10 and Windows 8.1, but if you like the simplicity of Windows 7 then this is the tutorial for you. Let's start off with first opening your browser. Go to the site listed in the description. And when you reach the page, it should show a header saying, Download Windows 7 Disk Images. If you're not on this page, then try and look for it. Once you are here, enter your product key um, for Windows 7 below. If you already have a Windows 7 installation CD, then you can skip these parts until we reach VirtualBox. Right now, you may be thinking that we are going to implement the ISO file into a separate blank DVD or USB, but we're not going to do that. That's for deal booting and other extremities. Okay, so once you have finished entering in your product key, hit verify and wait. The process does take some time, but if your key is valid, it should lead you forward. If not, check to see if your key is genuine. Next, you'll be asked for your product language. You may choose whatever language you desire. I'm going to pick English since it is the most used. Once you're done, click confirm and you'll be asked to download a 64-bit or 32-bit ISO file. I would recommend to choose whatever your host computer is. For example, mine is 64-bit so I'll choose that option. When you click on your option, the ISO f should start to download. You will need to wait for some time for it to download. Okay, so mine is completely downloaded. Make sure you know where your ISO file is. Now we shall enter VirtualBox. If you already, if you haven't already, type in VirtualBox into Google and download the application. Your VirtualBox should look like this if you're in Windows and it should look somewhat similar in Mac. I've already done so for downloading, so if you have, let's move on. So first, let's create a new virtual machine. Click this button and you will be redirected to this page. It will ask for the name and operating system. You may choose any name you want. I would just recommend choosing Windows 7 just um, for simplicity so you know what it is. It's actually my version is professional. So I'll just put that in. And notice how I kept in the version Windows 7 64 bit. It needs that to recognize the ISO file. So now we can move on. Now it'll ask for the memory size. Normally it might say something like 512 megabytes, but that is too small. Um, you should choose about halfway through your PC's, your host um, memory, minus eight gigabytes, so I'll choose around um, 4,096. That's around four gigabytes. That'll be fast enough. For the hard disk, uh, you don't have to add a virtual hard disk now, you can do it later, but I wouldn't recommend doing that. If you want to use an existing virtual hard disk file, you may be able to find one online, but then it'll already be created, you won't be able to do it yourself, and there already might be files in there. So I would recommend creating a virtual hard disk right now. So click create, and it is most used for using a virtual box disk image file, so I'll choose that. Um, so now it's asking for the storage on physical hard disk. There's a fixed size and there's a dynamically allocated. The dynamically allocated hard disk file will only use your space on the physical hard disk as it fills up. But the fixed size may uh, take longer to create on systems, but it is pretty fast. I'm just going to take the average dynamically allocated option. So now it's asking for the storage size of your computer. Um, right now, for me, it's saying 25 gigabytes. That is too small, so I'm going to keep it at 100. That should be moderate. And now, uh, you can actually set it anywhere from 4 megabytes to 2 uh, terabytes. It's not actually going to take up that much space on your computer. So I'll just change it back to 100 um, gigabytes. So now I click create, and it'll create my virtual OS. Now once you're done with that, click on start. A virtual machine window should pop up with ask, for asking you for your select startup disk option. 
that means you have to put in your ISO image or your CD. If you have your CD, then it should already be listed in here. But if you don't, if you have the ISO version downloaded, then just go to wherever your file was downloaded. So mine was in downloads and I'll click on this. So this is my file. Now once you have yours, click start. Right now it is loading files. So at this point you can just really follow what um th what they want for you. But if you're still a little confused, you can go along with this tutorial. So yeah, resizing doesn't really help. I'm going to select English and install now. So it'll take some time because it says the st setup is starting. There are quite an amount of files in here. Mine is loaded because it's 4 gigabytes. that's moderate speed. So once you reach this page, it's asking for the Microsoft Software License Terms. If you have that time, you can read all these stuff all, all these words but it's pretty long I've read it and it's um, pretty well versed but if you don't really want to read it just click I accept license terms because you anyways probably will accept license terms click on next once you're done now it's asking you if you want to upgrade or custom install I would recommend choosing the custom install because upgrade you need to have an operating system that's already there for example if you click it it'll say that there's nothing there it started with the windows installation disk you have to start from the operating system itself so now I'll go back and click on custom advanced now you'll reach a page that asks you about where you want to install windows we have only really put in one drive and it should say disk zero unallocated space it says my total size which is which is 100 gigabytes so that's the one I want I'll click next from here, you just have to wait. Okay, so now it's saying the setup will restart after the, the continue will after restarting your computer. So we just have to wait for it to restart again. Again, don't click any key when you reach this page because it'll just lead to setting up Windows all over again. So now your Windows is booting and you will soon arrive at the page where it asks you about your information like um, your time settings or your user profile. Yeah, see, it's preparing your computer for the first use. So it'll just, the setup will just check a couple stuff like video performance. It will make sure your computer is, your um, virtual computer is ready for use. And now you should arrive at this page. So you can type in any username you want. Um, I'm going to type in my um channel name so codecat and the computer name can i guess be codecat pc you can name it anything you want so once you're done click next so now it's asking you to set up a password for your account you don't have to you can just click next but um i would recommend keeping a password just for security so i'm going to keep a password and um, you just need a password hint, you can just say none if you don't want any, or if you want, you can just put some one word sentence or phrase, for example, mine is my outlook, so I'll click next, and now your Windows product key, um, I'm pretty sure that should already be there, so it'll activate you once you're on, um, it should, so now it, it's asking you to um, help protect your computer and improve Windows automatically. So you can ask, you can click Ask Me Later. You can click Install up and up Important Updates Only, or you can use Recommended Settings. I'm just going to use Recommended Settings. Now it's asking you about your time and date settings. 
depending on where you are, you can pick from this list. I'm in the Eastern Time Zone, so I shall click this. Once you're done, click Next. Now it's asking you about if your computer is a home network, work network, or public network. If you're using this for work purposes, then you can select either one of these. But if you're just using it for home, just select home. Right now it's connecting to the virtual network that VirtualBox provides. And it'll be applying all of these settings. So now it's finalizing everything. Your um, account will load in a couple seconds. So you just have to wait. As usual, it will say preparing your desktop. It, it should take some time, but it will lead you to a screen that is normal for Windows. So now the computer has loaded in and you can see you're at the basic windows um, the basic windows interface at this point if you like it how it is and you're going to install all your different um, utilities then you're done with the tutorial have a nice day for those of you who want who don't kinda like this layout see you can't really change this um, this theme because the thing is not there. See how it says the, there's a troubleshoot problem with transparency and other arrow effects? So because of that you need to install the VirtualBox files. Um, so you can change some uh, resolution settings from here but that isn't very helpful if you want to resize your um, your whole, your virtual screen and it to automatically resize its resolution so I would recommend installing the extension file pack so click on input sorry not input click on devices and click on insert guest additions CD image image this installs the additions to your computer so I've clicked this and it should download onto my computer here uh, it's somewhere here. Yes, here it is. So if you go to my computer, it should be here with devices with removable storage. Double click that and click on run. You can close this. Click on yes for this. You should be administrator already. So you will have the privilege to click yes instead of having to type a password. Uh, I might ask you again, so click yes. Okay, so it's led me to this page asking to install the Oracle VM VirtualBox Guest Editions. So this is the setup wizard. You can click next. And this path is totally fine. It'll, it will be in your program files um, location, which is, uh, which is right here. So it will be in your local disk and if you go into local disk it will be in program files now you do actually see another file called program files but this is for the 32-bit files the 32-bit applications that you install so now we're back to this click on next if you're satisfied where you want to install this and click on anything you want any component you want to install so um Let's see, I clicked on the direct 3D support. I'm just going to read this. So this system supports the Windows Arrow interface. VirtualBox support for this feature is experimental and should not be used on production systems yet. Would you like to install basic th direct 3D support instead? I would select yes, um, but it is not in safe mode, so it cannot be installed. So that's completely fine. Doesn't matter much. So click on install and wait for a couple seconds 
if you see this page, click on Always Trust so Software from Oracle Corporations because VirtualBox is from Oracle and click on Install. It will take a couple seconds, but you should be able to arrive soon. Yes, so the driver has been successfully installed, now it just has to complete its installation. So, get to the other sidebar. Yes, there we go. So now it says it's completed the Oracle VM VirtualBox Guest Edition setup. So if you want, you can reboot later if you have some work to do or if you just want to explore. But if you want to reboot now, which I recommend doing, go ahead. So click on finish and it will automatically reboot your computer. Okay, so your computer is now loading. Um, it is preparing to configure your computer, so you'll just have to wait a couple moments. Mine is pretty fast, so it's already at 100%. And now it'll lead you to your sign-in page. So enter in your password and... Oh, mine's incorrect. Yeah, so enter in your password and it should lead you in. Now, if this worked, let's try and change the theme. If it didn't, then we're goners. Oh, huh, somehow that did not work. Okay, so I guess that part wasn't changed, but you can still um, resize your screen and it will adjust to your resolution. So if you want it like a book style, that can work. If you want it completely flat, that will work. Um, so like this, stretch, that can work too. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. So thanks and have a good day.